so far we are moving our snack and there is an apple but there is no actual game logic which is if snake eats the apple it should increase the length and then apple should move to a different position so in this video we are going to implement that logic now collision detection is a very common thing in any uh, any video game so we are going to implement that concept so first we will write a function in our game okay so what do we want to do just think about it when snake's head hits the apple we want to increase the score so how do you detect that so just just think about it so let me open uh, paint and kind of go over that a little bit so let's say your this is your application screen and let's say this is your name this is your snake right so it's just uh, like a couple of blocks i'm just going to make it bigger and it is just a list of blocks nothing else right okay so let's say this is my snake and let's say this is my apple now the apple also has a bounding box so apple is actually a circle it's an icon that you're showing so it will be like this and when you hit that apple what's happening is let's say this snake comes here for example this guy here let's say comes into this area let's say this is collision right so here what happened is actually the the y the x of both of these are same the snake is moving up but what has changed is the y so just think about y so this is your y correct y1 let's say this is for apple and this is your uh, y2 for your head of the snake right so th this is the axis that i'm referring to and for y1 this is the point that we are referring to now what happens is when they collide see y1 plus size is what so y1 plus size will be this much see y1 plus size is basically this much size is the height of the apple so now what happens is y2 y2 is in that boundary it is in y1 plus size so if you do let's say y1 plus size this y2 now is in that boundary you got it so my y2 is now less than y1 plus size so this is how you can detect the vertical collision same thing with uh, x okay so we are going to implement that method as per that logic which i just explained so in the collision always you're trying to decide if two rectangles are colliding so then you will always have x1 y1 x2 y2 okay and if x1 is less than equal to x1 plus size see the width and height of both apple as well as the snake block is 40 so that's what we have initialized size to be 40 so x1 is less than that and actually x1 is uh so the logic will be x1 is greater than equal to uh x2 Let us think about y first, okay? So y here, your y two is less than y one plus size, okay? So similar logic you can apply for x one as well. So x one is greater than equal to x two, and x one is less than equal to x two plus size, and the same logic applies for y one. And I'll go to the diagram and explain you in a bit, but if 
the same logic for y if both of these conditions are true then you return true saying that there is a collision this means there is a collision otherwise there is not a collision okay so let's let's understand this y1 greater than equal to y2 and y1 less than equal to y2 plus size okay so here so here this is being my y1 so let me just uh, here in my code at least see i have this as y2 and this as y1 so what's happening is see let's look at this logic here so that logic will go here this is the logic we have right what this means is uh, let me just put it in a bigger window what this means is uh, my y1 is less than y2 plus size so we you already saw this y1 okay is less than uh, y2 plus size okay and uh, your y1 is greater than or equal to y2 so y1 is greater than or equal to y2 okay so you can just debug the code and kind of uh, figure out what it means here actually hold on y1 is greater than or equal to y1 is actually less than so i think previously what i was doing is correct which is See, it can be either way. Like, so I think this is y1 and this is y2. Okay. So this is y2 so, and this is y1 plus size. So if you look at this, let's say if you think about this as a y axis, so y axis starts from zero first, like, so it will be zero here. Then it will be whatever, like maybe five here and 20 and so on so it is increasing in this direction so if you think from that perspective the y y1 is greater than or equal to y2 right so this condition is met and y1 is less than or equal to y2 plus size so if you have y2 here and if you do y2 plus size which is 40 so this block so y2 plus size so y2 plus size is this much right so y1 is less than that that's why this collision logic works so just debug it you figure it out this is a simple logic now when snake hits uh, the apple you want to increase the length okay so here in the play section if self dot is collision okay and you you want to check the impact with only snake's head actually because you don't need to check it with the body so snake's head is the position zero and then you will say this apple dot y so you're checking the coordinate of apple and snake's head which is at element number zero and if you find a collision you will say this print collision occur right now just do let's do this much uh, just to make sure things are working okay and uh, after that let's see if we have anything pending so you are doing collision okay let's run it so you see that you see this collision occurred message right so that means the collision happened and now we can whenever collision happens what we want to do is we want to move the apple to a different position different random position so let's write the code for that so we'll say apple dot move so this means once snake apple hits the apple we move apple to a random position and for that you can come to this class here apple and write this method called move 
So here you will move uh, this to to a random position. Okay. Now, how do you do that? So there is a module called random, which you can import here. And I'll show you, see if you do idle, um, I'll just quickly show you how random works. So random has this function called rand end. So if you give less than one and 10, it will give you a random number between one and 10, see? Every time you run, it gives number between one and 10. Now our window is, thousand thousand by 800 correct and apple size is 40. so if you do little calculation thousand okay divided by 40 you get like 25 increments and if you do 800 divided by 40 you get 20. so you get like this horizontally 25 increment of 40 and vertically 20 increment of 40. So what I can do is here I can say random dot randint. Okay. Give me a number between 0 and 25. So horizontally I have 25 increment into size. So what will happen here is if you look at idle, let's say between you know like 1 and 25. I'll just do 1 because or zero is also fine and size is 40 so see every time it gives me a number which is always gonna be less than thousand so we don't go out of our window boundary and the number will be divided by 40 it will be a multiple of 40 and i did the same thing with y so for y with 800 height you can get 20 increments okay so you after the collision you move it so let's run this see after i'm colliding so my collision detection is happening perfectly okay and the snake is moving okay now on collision you want to increase the size of the snake so that will be a score so in the initial phase i will maybe i'll start with the snake size of 10 2 or maybe one and then um, I just keep on incrementing the length okay so on collision you want to increment the length so here okay where is my collision yeah here you want to say length you want to increment right but you have to do something else as well which is when you increment your length see you need to add one more block in this x and y because x and y is an array it is holding the position of the new block so for that reason i will just write a new method here called increase length okay where you first of course you first increase the length but then you want to add something into x and y so this is how you add a new element into an array and I'm uh, adding minus one as a value. You can always uh, tackle this in your walk function. In your walk function, we'll put a right um, coordinates of X and Y. That's why we can just start with uh, some random value here. So here, I will say increase length and let's run this see now after it hit it, it it the size of snake is two now see it is two and if i hit it again it will become three you will watch it see now it became four pi and so on okay i think i noticed something weird ah see if it moves even near near see i'm not going through apple if i go even above apple see, this is fine yeah 
if I'm going even from near Apple, it is increasing the weight. And I think that's because of this less than equal. I think this should be probably less than. Okay. See, now it's working as expected. So now it increased the length and so on. So here also Apple moved to a very far position. So I want to restrict it. So I'll just say 40, this is 90. On zero, zero position is probably okay. All right, so this is looking pretty good. So now next thing I want to do is display the score. Okay, so in my game function, I will write a method called display score. And this should just display the score at the maybe top right. You know, I will choose top right to display for displaying the score. And Pygame has this uh, font module. So I'm using the system font, which is Arial with a 30 font size, you can increase it as well. And then uh, this font I will store into a variable called score. So this is how you do it. And here the score is nothing but the snake's length. Okay. So I'm using Python format string, storing it, uh, storing the score there. And in render function, this is uh, your color. So if you do like 255, 255, 255, it will be white color. So you can choose whatever color you like. And then, you know, we always have a surface. So whenever you want to show anything on a surface, you have to use blit function. And then what are the coordinates? Well, let's say 810. So that, that will be top right corner. And once you do that, here I can display the score and after displaying score of course you have to do pi game dot display dot split so you see the score at the top here okay so now ah see score increased too score is equal to the length of my snakes three see I'm doing good Wonderful, my game is coming up so nice, guys. That's all I had for this session. In the next session, we'll look into the scenario of snake hitting itself. So if snake is moving like a round and if it hits its body, the game will be over. So that's what we'll be looking at in the next session.